Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, topic for today is to cover uh, different caching patterns that are available uh, when you use Clojure and uh, memoization as well. So we will uh, take a look into three things today. Uh, first one is the most basic implementation, which is actually included into the Clojure core. So and there is a function called memoize. We'll take a look how to use that uh, when it's a good uh, uh, use case to use it and also what are the problems with that approach. And after that, we will take a look into more advanced things. So it will be a Clojure uh, closure core uh, cache and closure core memoize uh, to different libraries um, yeah and we'll see how they are used and how they can help so let's start our uh, talk uh, about this memoize function from closure core and uh, what we want to achieve with this function so uh, i provide a couple examples here so let's uh, pick this url and let's build a uh, function that will um, like get uh, Pokemon name by ID uh, so the param will be just ID and inside we want to build a URL and it will be just string and this one and we will add ID at the end so yeah and on top of that we want just to call um, uh, slurp on URL. Let's see that first in action. So I'll open a comment block here and let's call it with something. So Pokemon 100. So we get some text uh, from it. Uh, so what we want to do is also like a JSON decode and we want to pass true. So we have keys and um, let's see that. Yeah, so now we have uh, our map converted, uh, like our JSON passed to a map. And uh, just to keep uh, the output small, let's pick, I believe there is a field called name. And if we execute this and this, so now we have this small output, which is a name for ID, right? So there is also a useful function to measure time. So if we can, uh, it's actually a macro, I believe. Yeah, it's macro. So we, we can measure the time of our call. Uh, so we have uh, 73 milliseconds right now. Um, yeah, and also let's just add a print line here. So uh, print len uh, calling uh, for ID and let's part pass our ID here. So we just see that uh, body of the function is actually executed. So as you see, it's printed. If I execute it once again, it's printed again. So here we don't have uh, too much time spending on HTTP requests, but sometimes there is a use case. You have a slow API and you know that uh, response is kind of static, uh, not changing a lot. So in that use case, you potentially want just to cache your result and return it immediately after that. Uh, that's not only for HTTP requests or some network requests. It could be also some uh, code that uh, like CPU intense and takes time to finish, uh, but uh, for example, you, it's fine just to cache the result and uh, reuse it later. So yeah, you can imagine different use cases for that. And the most easy way to um, implement that is to actually use a memoize function. Uh, so to do that, we want just to wrap our function in memoize call. So it will be, we need a different name here. So it will be get Pokemon by ID, and let's say memo at the end. And we want to call memoize and we're passing our function inside. So now uh, here we want to call this new function. Uh, if I reload everything and run it. So first time no changes, but we still have this print line. If I call it, uh, run it once again. Uh, now we have a uh, much quicker response uh, and we instantly have this data back because there's no uh, actual call inside, it's just a lookup into the map, uh, in the cache map. 
So to understand how this works, we need to go inside uh, and it's pretty simple, the implementation. So we basically have uh, how we call it like it, a closure, right? And uh, in this top level let, we have a mem, which is an atom that contains a um, hash map, empty hash map. And after that, we return a new function that takes the same args as our function, original function takes. Uh, so these arcs will be used as a key inside a map. So for example, if we call uh, a function with uh, just one ID, like 100, it will be a map and here it will be a result. Uh, so the uh, content of the in uh, internal uh, atom will be something like that. Uh, and as, as you can see, these args are not limited to only one argument. So all uh, if, if our function takes more than one argument, it will be an, a vector of arguments here. So in general, uh, for some random function with multiple args, it will be a vector like arg1, arg2, um, and it will be uh, mapped to the result of the function. So uh, once we get, uh, once we uh, here inside the function, we first uh, thing we do is we check if we already have a value for that uh, uh, args vector inside the map. If it's there, we return it immediately. So this um, value e. Uh, if not, uh, we apply our function to the args. So we actually calling our function with the args here. And the result is pl uh, placed inside the uh, mem uh, atom. And after that, we uh, the next call, it basically will return it immediately from the cache. So that's, uh, um, that's pretty helpful function. There are a couple problems with that. Uh, and first of all, uh, as you can see, uh, this memory atom is never cleaned so um, it's not a good fit for a case when you have a constant flow of calls with different arguments and you have for example a large uh, return um, value from a function so in that case you'll just uh, keep growing your um, uh, memory usage uh, and uh, yeah so just keep that in mind only when you redeploy your application or if you're doing it locally uh, reload the REPL, uh, reload the namespace, it will clean up this uh, this memory. So that's the first thing. Uh, but obviously for these use cases, uh, you, you usually use it for some simple cases, so maybe that's not a problem. Uh, the other thing to, uh, to notice is that uh, if you're using this memoize function for a case when you have a um, really high concurrency uh, so you're basically calling same uh, uh, same function uh, with same argument uh, in multiple threads uh, there is no guarantee that when the map is empty it will be called only once so um, as you can see there is a race condition here between line with where we have e flat and applying uh, the function. So if you're unlucky and you have two function uh, function call with the same argument, uh, this one will return nil because it's not in the map uh, and it will return nil for the second call as well. And after that, uh, this, this will be applied twice. So you will end up in situation when you uh, execute your uh, function, the potentially a slow function or uh, CPU intense function multiple times anyway uh, but yeah um, it's uh, a rare case uh, and there's definitely simple cases when this memoize uh, function will be just enough for, for you uh, and it's usually a good thing to keep in mind anyway uh, and also um, the good thing about that is no extra dependencies so just a closure core uh, yeah Cool. So before we move next, uh, one extra thing that, uh, uh, like extra caveat that we'll have with this memoize function is that, uh, imagine we have a case, something like we have uh, our, uh, like we have extra dependencies basically here. So let's say we have dependencies 
argument. Uh, so for example, we use integrand or component and we're passing our dependencies here. And uh, the problem that inside those dependencies we can have um, mutable objects, stuff like that. And in general, we don't want to use them um, as the part of the caching key. Um, annoyingly, this memoize function uh, doesn't support uh, overriding uh, what will be used as a caching key from the args. So there is no way to, uh, as a workaround around this case. And if you have a mutable uh, argument or something that you don't want to put inside the cache key, uh, you basically cannot use memoize function from closure core. To fix that, uh, we're now uh, looking into closure core uh, dot cache. So with uh, closure dot cache, we have uh, now more options, uh, which uh, type of cache we want to create. So um, it's listed here. So we have first in, first out, uh, least recently used, uh, which is by time, and then least used, uh, and uh, more easy to understand name is uh, least frequently used. So it has a threshold and then uh, the element that was called least amount of times, it will be uh, evicted from the cache uh, if it's filled. Then we have uh, time to leave, uh, TTL, which is really a useful thing uh, in real world, and some naive cache stuff. But yeah, um, there are two uh, different APIs available in uh, uh, in this library, so which uh, first one is just uh, closure.core.cache, and then we have closure.core.cache.wrapped. And um, difference is uh, that in the first API, you basically have your uh, your cache object uh, immutable, immutable cache, and then you have to manage the lifecycle uh, of that and how you updated so usually you'll put it in inside an item or something like that um, good thing is that in this wrapped api it's already solved for you so when we create a cache like that it will be all already wrapped into an atom and there is a really useful uh, api function called lookup or miss uh, which you can use to uh, do basically uh, all you, all you need from cache, so it will look up for a key. If it's missing, uh, it will execute a function, uh, and uh, the result of that function will be placed in the cache. It is really convenient and the, the uh, recommended way to use this library because it handles a lot of problems uh, that could uh, happen if you try to implement uh your own approach with this low level api and by low level api i mean calls like heat has miss and all that stuff it's really uh good uh it's really well described into a uh, uh, into this article uh so you can find it right here there is a link and i'll also put it in the description so uh really nice read uh if you really want to understand why and what type of uh, bugs you can introduce in your code when you use this low level API. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting to read and see some examples. The main takeaway, if you don't want to spend much time uh, reading all of those, is that uh, the only API you should use is this function uh, lookup or miss from a wrapped uh, namespace. And if you do that, uh, you, you'll avoid a huge number of uh, uh, subtle uh, uh, bugs and problems. So let's take a look how to use that uh, in real code. So this cache uh, refers to uh, this wrapped API. Uh, so if we execute this and uh, just take a look what we have inside a uh, cache. Now we have an empty uh, map. <clears throat> and let's just quickly uh, check what's inside. So there are different 
uh, types of uh, cache factories here. So we have first in, first out, uh, LRU, TTL, and all that stuff. So you you pick what you want. And then, for example, for first in, first out, I want threshold of three. So it will only allow to, to store up to three elements inside the map. Uh, for TTL, you will provide like milliseconds or seconds or some. Um, I don't remember really what's that like. I believe milliseconds. So uh, regarding the uh, lookup or miss usage, so we have this function and then we provide our cache as a first argument and then we have the lookup key. And after that, we have a, um, a function call. And let's actually start by writing in a slightly different way. So it will uh, expect one argument, which will be the um, lookup key. And inside we will call our function that we want to cache. So this one, uh, get Pokemon by ID, and then we have our dependencies and we want to put a lookup key right here. Let's reload. So now we execute this thing and you can see that we have something in the cache. Now, if we execute it once again, um, we now avoid the real call. We just return value from the cache. Um, so we can do it multiple times. And now if we put a different ID here, uh, we now have more elements inside the cache. And if we add something else, Now I have three elements, and if I put uh, one more element there, you see we now still have three elements and the first ID was removed from the cache. So you all have the same uh, behavior or different behavior like for TTL and uh, other types of cache, but uh, like the usage will be exactly the same with this lookup or miss uh, function. So if you're using uh, something like a component or integrant, a good idea will be to use uh, that as uh, uh, to manage the life cycle of the cache. So an example of a component usage will be something like uh, first in, first out cache component. And then we uh, printing that we start component and then we creating this cache atom. Uh, we get this threshold from the config and on the stop, there is actually nothing to stop. We just uh, set this uh, cache uh, reference to nil, a uh, cache value to nil. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's possible to define it globally like that, uh, but uh, with a component, uh, you will have a benefit of uh, uh, passing this to functions as the dependency. Uh, so it will be the same as your other uh, components in the system. So you can access cache inside this dependency map where you need it. Um, yeah, so it adds some structure. And also for development, uh, you'll have an option to easily restart your app and your cache will be recreated and it will be in an empty state, which is useful for development as well. So moving next and the uh, Last item on the list is how to use this closure.core.memoise uh, library. Um, so I think it will not be a surprise that uh, this library uses the core.cache uh, under the hood, but it provides a different API. So uh, you see we have the same types of caches available or behaviors available, like first in, first out and all that stuff. Uh, but the API, how you use it, is more similar to what we had with just uh, closure core memoize function. So we'll just wrap our function into uh, like an extra function and it will provide our uh, cached uh, variant of a function. So if you don't want to create your cache as part of your system uh, in a component, um, this could be a good uh, good option to use. So let's take a look into that in action. So we have the same function we want to work with and uh, we have these dependencies um, and then we create our TTL uh, memoized function. So I decided to put like a three 
seconds here. Uh, let's restart. And this is the ex example how to use. So we call it with 100. Then we call it again. Um, and as you see, this call, it was from cache, but here it was already expired and we had to do uh, an extra call and it's because of this TTL threshold. Uh, so the other thing is uh, this useful memoize uh, snapshot function that will show you your state of your uh, uh, cache. So you see now we have these dependencies as the part of our uh, key. So we have all arguments right here. The good thing about this uh, library is that it adds an option to override the function that will be used um, to create this uh, vector, uh, which will be a key in, in the cache. So to do that, we need to add an extra metadata uh, in to our function. So let's grab this bit and put it inside function definition. So the library will uh, look into this uh, metadata key and this is called uh, args fn or something like that and it basically takes uh, as an argument a uh, argument list that we have in uh, in here and after that we basically can uh, create uh, or like uh, filter that argument list and remove things that we don't need. So what I've done here is I destructured the args, I just named it so we know that it's dependencies and then we want to return a vector as well, but it will contain only one element there. So uh, this is quite flexible because we now can solve the problem that we had with um, just memoize function when we had to cache everything every arg that we uh, receive in, in, the, in the function call. So if we just run it uh, like that now, uh, you can expect that this will be printed, and but it will not be a case. So as you see, nothing is printed. The, the problem is if you want to use this feature, uh, you, you, you don't want to pass it here as just a function name. You want to pass it as the uh, var because only var will contain the metadata information as I understand that. So uh, to do that you just want to prepend it with this uh, uh, quite ugly syntax but yeah that's how it works. So if we go back here and put our thing right here and now if we restart reload everything so if we call it uh, now we see this print line and we see this, uh, w what we received. So it's like a list of two elements. And yeah, let's rerun that. And now if we uh, snapshot our cache, you see that the, in the vector, uh, we now have just one element, which is quite nice. So I just showed here uh, that it's quite flexible and you can uh, basically create any logic here, implement any logic here, which args you want to pick uh, to cache. But for this example, we basically want to um, remove the first one. So uh, what we can do is just do rest, right? So the rest on top of, uh, sorry, the rest on top of the list uh, will be like one, two, three. So so it will be just this thing. So it will be just ID. Um, if we refresh and call it again. So you see the same, uh, same result. And we're getting it from, from the cache if we inside this TTL threshold. Yeah, I think uh, that's the end of the video for today. Uh, these libraries are really useful. Uh, the last thing to mention is, uh, I believe that's obvious, but uh, anyway, worth mentioning that uh, it is all in memory cache. So if you have your application deployed as a service with multiple instances under the load balancer, uh, 
Um, and if your request just goes to one instance first and then the other, and you have some memorization inside, it will uh, work only inside one instance. And if you, if your request same request hits the other instance, it's going to do a real call first, and then it will be cached. So if uh, that's not what you want, potentially you uh, want to use some distributed cache uh, option, but that's obviously much more complex and you need a separate uh, uh, deployment for that, something like Redis or whatever people use for that. So keep that in mind and thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for likes, uh, subscribes and comments. And also a huge thanks to all people who supported me on Buy Me A Coffee. And I recently created a option to subscribe there. So if you want to uh, support me on the monthly basis uh, just follow the link it will be in the pinned comment and uh, yeah thanks a lot for watching hope that's uh, that was useful and see you in the next one